And welcome to Positive Parenting. I'm Deanne Conrad, Community Relations Supervisor for the Sioux Falls School District. Positive Parenting is a joint venture between the education professionals of the Sioux Falls School District and the medical and child development professionals of Sanford Health. And we're grateful that you're joining us today. We have an important topic that uh, all parents and grandparents and really everyone needs to be aware of. Um, vaccinations, those shots that your, your children need to be uh, enrolled in school and also to remain healthy throughout their lives. So we have guests here today to uh, continue our discussion and we will have each of them introduce themselves before we get started. Greg, we'll start with you. Hi, I'm Greg Sperlin, pediatric nurse at Sanford Children's on 69th and Louise. I currently work for Dr. Zylstra. Thanks. I'm Molly. Molly Satter, I'm the health services supervisor with the Sioux Falls School District. Great, well, you guys are equipped to answer all of our questions about immunizations. And I know Greg is because we see Dr. C. And so we, uh, we, we definitely have seen uh, Greg before as well. So thanks to both of you for joining us. Um, those shots, um, we, we typically think, you know, you gotta take your kids in for the new shots, the babies, um, you know, you, your series of shots right away with the newborns and, and things like that. Um, and then we have the enroll, enrollment shots for students coming into school. Mm -hmm. And then there are shots a little later on. And somehow, as a parent, as my children get a little older, sometimes I fall out of sync with when I'm supposed to be getting those shots for kids. And um, you know, you, you uh, have those well checks and such for the little ones early on. But um, Greg, why is it so important to have shots and stay on a schedule for, for vaccinations? Well, immunizations are important across the board, uh, whether it's something that's state required to be enrolled in, in school or not. Um, but most importantly, probably with the new requirements, the Tdap, uh, one of the components of that vaccine is the pertussis. And we've, over the recent years, kind of seen an influx of pertussis uh, in our neighboring states and some in our community as well. So it's one of those things that's uh, co common and preventable uh, situation to keep your child out of the hospital and some serious illnesses. Absolutely. So those series of shots um, early on in, in a child's life lead to the kindergarten shots for yeah. enrollment and that's a critical uh, piece that yeah. we need to have for uh, records mm -hmm. and report that to the state. Talk a little bit about that that process and sure. collecting all that information. That's a big task. It sure is. Um, so we actually begin with early childhood students uh, making sure that they're properly immunized and keeping those records and then when we get to the kindergarten age then we're actually um, processing them and submitting them to the State Department of Health and so uh, we just work with families through that process, our nurses, um, we work with health care providers in making sure the students are meeting those requirements upon entry into school. and. Right. Um, and sometimes there are obstacles that come with that um, for some parents. It might be a lack of insurance, um, lack of a health care provider that they're connected with, um, even transportation. Um, sometimes we have families in um, you know, homeless type situations and so there are just some real struggles that um, families sometimes need help with. And so our nurses, um, social workers, even the clerical staff in the building all play a huge role in, in that process. Absolutely. So. Um, in terms of getting all of those records and getting um, families connected with health care providers and things like that, mm -hmm. that's a necessary piece um, because we have to report that off to the state. Right, right. And, and parents can bring shot records in. Um, we also have state access to the state immunization system. And so we can also 
look up shots if they're entered in there. And so, um, yeah, we rely on the parents to help provide those shot records and we do some looking up, but yeah, it's a, it's a joint effort from everyone. Yes. So, Greg, what happens if um, a, a child falls behind in a series of, of vaccinations? I mean, how, how does the clinic handle that? I mean, do you get everybody up to speed right away or is it does it have to be done in a, a <clears throat> series? There certainly are some requirements of minimal intervals in, in between their series of vaccines. Um, there's a catch-up schedule and we try to come up with a plan and then also remind those parents uh, as well on, on when they're due for their next ones and try uh, also if they've passed that time uh, try and schedule an appointment and, and we may need to call them and remind them that uh, they are due or ready for that that next set of, in that series of vaccines that they're due for. Sure, I think most people are familiar with um, the the kindergarten shots. That's become sort of ingrained in our our uh, minds as parents that mm -hmm. you know they're going to need those shots before they go to kindergarten. Um, this year, though, there was a change with uh, requirements through the state for incoming sixth graders, and I know it's a lot more complex than that because it's like before you turn or 45 days after you turn mm -hmm. a certain age or such. Um, do you guys wanna, Molly, sure. you wanna take that one and, and explain that change? Sure. Um, it's any student entering sixth grade um, at the age of 11, or they should be the age of 11. So if they're entering sixth grade and they're not 11 yet, they have 45 days once they have their 11th birthday. Um, and mm -hmm. so a majority, I mean, there, that really applies to very few that mm -hmm. enter sixth grade as a 10 year old. Um, but yes, otherwise it's, it's upon entry into school, into sixth grade. So we aren't going back to those students. We certainly recommend the vaccine for students beyond sixth grade, but we're not going back in, in requiring and obtaining those shot records for those students. Mm -hmm. But so we're focusing right now on those new sixth grade students this year. And that shot or series of shots mm -hmm. is, is what? Um, the Tdap and the meningitis. Okay, yep. and Tdap includes? Tetanus, um, diphtheria, and pertussis. Okay. And the uh, meningitis vaccine that's uh, currently as going into the sixth grade has four different strains of, of the meningococcal disease uh, protection. And w once they turn 16, then there's an additional meningitis vaccine that they can receive at that point. Okay, so why the change in uh, the law this mm -hmm. year or, or what, what led to that? Well, really nationwide, um, most states require adolescent immunizations um, in entry to middle school or junior high. And so really it was, uh, it was time for us, our state, to really look at that and um, see what's best for children in protecting against those dis diseases because they know that um, the immunity that they get when they're younger wanes, mm -hmm. especially for the, the Tdap is actually part of it's a DTAP when they're in, um, in kindergarten. And so some of those diseases they're being protected against, but um, the protection begins to wane as an adolescent. And so it's really important to come in and get that, that next Tdap. Um, and then the meningitis, that's when they start to be at higher risk for, um, for that. And so that's why the addition of that. Right. So Greg, did you guys see a surge in, um, appointments or phone calls uh, at the beginning of the school year? Well, certainly we've seen some some changes in parents just calling and inquiring about it mm -hmm. a little bit more than probably the influx of it. Mm -hmm. These two vaccines is nothing new, mm -hmm. nothing new that as pediatricians that we would recommend. So I would say the majority of those those parents and families that immunize their kids going into school and, and stay up to date with their wellness mm -hmm. checks they had nothing to worry about because mm -hmm. they've already been vaccinated against these. So it's nothing new. It's just something that on the state end is, is now a requirement mm -hmm. to, to get into school. So I just want to make that clear that it's yeah. no new recommendation. It's been recommended. And I would say, you know, the majority of children by the time they're sixth grade have already had these vaccines going into okay. school. Okay. So again, playing catch up with those maybe who haven't mm -hmm. had it by then and getting them up to speed sure. by that sixth. Yeah, I would, I would say that our influx came from those kids that maybe because of insurance purposes or whatever reason, mm -hmm. they weren't due for their next wellness check till say fall or winter time. Mm -hmm. They were coming in to just kind of get caught up on those vaccines part of it. So right. we certainly did see a kind of an influx or a rush of those parents this summer, early, early fall, I guess. Sure. 
So um, another one I know, just because I have that age group of, of um, children, is is the HPV vaccine, mm -hmm. and um, that's something that we talk to parents about a lot as well, right? Yes, that's another one of the recommended. Um, it's not required by the state, but it certainly is highly recommended. And it really is looked at um, as a cancer prevention type mm -hmm. of um, immunization. And so um, it's something that our nurses uh, have conversations with parents about and um, encourage as well. Mm -hmm. so. so we had been in for our, um, it's a three, three, dose three shot series, series. And so we've done one and two. Um, and I was really impressed when we went in, there was like the option to get text back mm -hmm. um, when it's time for your next mm -hmm. shot. And, and yeah. so as a busy parent, I'm, I was like, wow, that, that's a nice option. Is that just with the HPV or are yeah. you doing HPV that? is the only one that I'm aware of that has that option. Uh, okay. They had a couple different options to get those reminders. Right. Uh, everything from refrigerator magnet that yep. kind of blinks when it's time uh, to this text. And I, I think, uh, when I talked to them recently that they uh, kind of read the fridge magnets and kind of went more to the, to the, text. the text, getting a, a text reminder. Sure. And, and that's something that we try and remind and, and have parents also set up as at that time too. And with their tetanus and meningitis, we offer that HPV and, and it's just as important if not uh, more as, as some of these other mm -hmm. vaccines as well. It, it really is a preventative disease. That, uh, especially, you know, the females and cervical cancer mm -hmm. is one of those things that protects against. Mm -hmm. And um, I try to tell parents as well, if there was a vaccine that would pre prevent your daughter from getting breast cancer, everybody would be getting it. Mm -hmm. This sure. is just as important and, and common uh, in females. And it also has a component that will protect them against genital warts as well, which is one of those things uh, that isn't going to kill you, but it's one of those things that will be with you lifelong sure. and sure. it's preventable. So those prevention pieces are critical, and uh, if you make the right decisions at the right time and follow that vaccination schedule. Um, just prior to uh, having our show today, I received my something from my insurance company, the uh, schedule for your child's vaccinations, which is helpful. I have one of these hanging on the um, inside of one of my cabinet doors, but um, it is nice to look at it and go, okay, seven to 10 years. And obviously my insurance company knows I have older children because mm -hmm. it, it goes from seven to 10 years, 11 to 12, 13 to 15 and 16 to 18. And I, I'm, I'll admit that maybe we haven't stayed up with our well checks um, after age eight. Um, and we should, uh, because that the kids need mm -hmm. those those options. We're in for flu shots every year, um, but not necessarily for well checks. But why are well checks so important even in those older years? Well checks are, are recommended on a yearly basis after they've hit the, kind of that kindergarten time. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of different things that are preventable and early interventions. Mm -hmm. Everything from their development, from their social skills mm -hmm. to um, all the other um, milestones, childhood mm -hmm. milestones. And then also um, we catch, you know, adolescent age, we start uh, considering uh, their lipid panels and seeing where they are for cholesterol levels and mm -hmm. um, heart conditions. There's lots of, of those mm -hmm. things that may not be symptomatic, uh, but we're able to catch them on a wellness exam. So critical yet that, that kids at any age see their healthcare provider on a regular you basis. Bet. You bet. And how does that help out in um, just again, that pre preventative care mm -hmm. um, helps kids when they're in the classroom more closely focus on what they're supposed to be focusing right. on unless they're, you know, if, if they're not feeling well, yeah. um, that can be a distraction. Right. It, it's just part of that overall health and wellness and making sure that they are um, having that connection with their health care provider and so that they can maybe identify some of those um, things that are preventable. Um, and that education piece too, I know there's some education and um, students start to become more at risk for certain things at certain ages and so um, that is all important in, in the whole child and making sure they're, they're healthy and um, able to be in school and focus on school and, and not some other health type issue. Sure, so um, seems like <clears throat> every year we talk about flu shots and we should be talking about that um, but it also seems like flu used to be even respiratory or the the stomach flu or what have you, that always seemed to be a, a January, February issue. And now um, I've heard 
people, you know, kids being out with various illnesses already at, at the beginning of the mm -hmm. school year, it's kind of a, we've opened ourselves up to not just a, a winter sort of flu season, but <laughs> um, how important it is, is it for, for families to consider the flu vaccine as well? I think it's just as important as any other. Um, one of the misconceptions probably with our influenza vaccine is it does not protect against GI illnesses, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. uh, vomiting, diarrhea stuff, mm -hmm. it's respiratory stuff. Uh, which can go from a child having minimal symptoms to really struggling to, to breathe, breathe and, and be needing to be hospitalized. So it's one of those things uh, that it's not a perfect vaccine, but it certainly is, is a good vaccine that will lessen your risk. And those children that uh, we occasionally see that do come down with an influenza that were vaccinated, their symptoms are far, far less than mm -hmm. those children that have not been vaccinated against it. Against it. Uh, one of the new things with this year uh, is the influenza mist is not uh, available this year. Uh, the initial studies Boy. were showing that it was. I know. <laughs> initial studies that showed that they were <laughs> they were pretty that it was a, a good vaccine and and um, over the last couple of years the um, protection rate was, was minimal or, or not. So it is actually not even being produced this year. So it's the injectable vaccine, uh, which is, is working fairly well. Mm -hmm. So um, I know in the past, the, the state had provided schools with the option of flu, free mm -hmm. flu vaccine. Yes. That is no longer an option this year. Correct, and, it, it, and the state provided it not only to schools, but to any provider okay. who was um, an immunization provider. And yes, that, that um, funding for that had, has been cut, and so we are not able to offer the free flu shot clinics in our schools. We are uh, strongly recommending students uh, contact their health care provider. There are lots of options within our community. Your health care provider, there are local pharmacies that all have walk-in type clinics, um, shot clinics. Um, and so making sure to continue to get your, your vaccine, and we just aren't able to do it in that school setting this year, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So while the convenience was, I mean, it was good and mm -hmm. convenient for some families, um, I have to think if you walk into the clinic, um, you guys are probably gonna be able to catch a lot more of, of those kids that need to be up to date on some other vaccinations as well. You bet, you bet. Uh, that's one of the things that we do uh, anytime a child comes in for whatever vaccine is, is we check their healthcare record uh, to make sure that there aren't any other vaccines that they could use um, that may not have been required even to get into school uh, as a state requirement, but it's still one that's re highly recommended and we try and encourage those families to get caught up on those as well. Sure, so knowing that the schools um, in Sioux Falls are not going to be able to offer the, the free flu uh, clinics, flu shot clinics, um, I assume you will all have various flu shot clinics yes. in the clinic yep. setting. You bet. Um, each of our clinics has uh, walk-in hours or times. Uh, they just need to, families just need to contact their uh, clinic to basically set up a time as far as that goes for most of them. Um, and it, just a quick in and out, see one of the nurses to get that vaccine taken care of. Uh, we also do have plans. I don't know if they are set in stone on particular dates and times mm -hmm. uh, to actually where there be several nurses and providers and that's all they'll be doing is giving those influenza vaccines. Right. Um, and uh, we've been recommending as soon as the clinics have gotten their influenza vaccines to uh, vaccinate. There's, it's not too soon to vaccinate. Uh, it's better to get them done earlier than later uh, sort of thing. And we've been, uh, I think most of the clinics, as far as I'm aware, have, have received all their flu mm -hmm. vaccines at least mm -hmm. for the last week. So um, what is the length of, of coverage time of a flu? It will protect time. them all the way through the season up until early summer. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. If they were to get it to today, it would give them optimal protection until then. Okay, so not too soon. Um, don't wait till the snow flies. That's when you mm -hmm. start to think, okay, we're entering flu mm -hmm. season. But as mentioned, um, there were um, a number of symptoms, you know, out there for various things. Not that there's been a, a valid case of, of flu um, at the time of this taping, but there's just all kinds of different symptoms out there that it should make you mindful that it's right around the corner. <laughs> 
Yeah, the influenza is, is certainly an important vaccine to get. Again, to kind of touch base on, on that, I was at a recent conference uh, that kind of went through the statistics from last season and the amount of deaths. 50% uh, of those children that died last year had no symptoms, were healthy children with mm -hmm. not under underlying, underlying symptoms. Mm -hmm. So we have families that say, oh, my, my children are health, otherwise healthy and, and think that they can avoid that. Well, half mm -hmm. of those uh, children, unfortunately, didn't make it last year right. that were healthy. Wow, that is something to mm -hmm. striking to think about. And, you know, my, my kids will fight when they hear that we're not going to have the flu mist this year. <laughs> <laughs> the oldest one, she did the shot last year. She was turned into, decided she was going to be brave and do the shot. Uh, the other two were not going to have the shot at all and did the mist, but they're going to we have to start <clears throat> informing them now that that's not even an option. <laughs> so um, what have we seen? Have we seen some illnesses already in, in school or, or um, I've heard sore throats kind of um, that kind of thing that's seems to be. Yes, nothing. Um, there's been no real, or, yeah, no real um, bugs that we, I've heard a whole lot about. I mean, you have your typical sore throats, um, a little bit of, you know, stomach flu kind of um, symptoms, but nothing majorly concerning at this point. So um, just keep our fingers crossed right. that that continues. And but like you say, we know it's, it's right around the corner. It's not very far off. So um, in, if a, a if a student is presenting with symptoms, kind of walk us through what the process is. I mean, typically a teacher is going to send them down to the class or down to the the um, office, and kind of what's the process that sure. a, a school nurse will go through mm -hmm. to evaluate them? Yes. Um, so the nurses do assess the students. They're taking their temperature, um, asking questions like, "Has anybody in, else in your house been sick?" Um, you know, if it's a stomach ache, it's kind of getting to the bottom of is, what is going on mm -hmm. here. Sometimes it could be something that's maybe not exactly physically health related. Maybe they're worrying about something or anxious, mm -hmm. but kind of asking some of those questions to, to sort through all of that and determine um, what other signs and symptoms that they have. Um, maybe looking at a throat if it's a sore throat and um, contacting parents with whatever their findings are and making a recommendation. Um, you know, to either to go home or you should see your health care provider, that kind of thing. So they're sure. assessing and working with parents and, and getting them connected with whomever it is they should be seeing. I know in various conversations that you and I have talked about, um, you have mentioned the um, health care coalition and sort of a, mm -hmm. the group in Sioux oh, Falls that really... Immunization coalition. Immunization mm -hmm. coalition, mm -hmm. yes. That the group really, there's a... a, a uh, is it a board, a committee? Mm -hmm. What is it that yep. works on health issues yep. related the, to children? The Sioux Falls Area Immunization Coalition um, is just a, it's a place where um, all pro providers, anyone really, um, can come and join for those meetings. And it's um, representation from the different healthcare organizations in town. Um, the, the school district myself is there. Um, and just uh, any other providers who have uh, uh, an interest in immunizations and protection for children. And so um, we get together monthly and talk about the different things that are going on and share ideas and um, get the word out. Uh, there was a lot of discussion in the months leading up to um, the new sixth grade requirements and um, working together really just as a community to make sure that we're um, make, that making sure that uh, children and families are immunized and protected. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's a great thing for our community. Yeah, is that mm -hmm. pretty standard that most communities our size have something like that, or is it a yep. collaborative effort? That Oftentimes states have immunization coalitions, and um, ours happens to be the Sioux Falls area, so it's, it's Sioux Falls and surrounding. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yes, that's, it's common in other states, maybe even more so um, than what we have around here. What have, they sometimes have several kind of regional groups, sure. um, but yes, we're going strong here in Sioux Falls. Sure. Good. And all for area. the betterment of, of yes. kids and families and the health of health and safety of, of those kiddos as well. We're coming up on the end of our time. Um, Greg, what reminders or last words would you offer to parents about vaccinations? Maybe they haven't um, kept up and you know need to get caught up. Or what sure. final words? Well, first thing would be to contact your health care provider. Um, we'd be more than happy to let you know uh, if your child is due for that next wellness check 
there's any vaccines that uh, they haven't been caught up on or are recommended. Um, and, and then um, schedule an appointment to, to get that taken care of. Great, and Molly? Um, just again, the importance of immunizations and just know that our staff, our school nurses, our clerical, our social workers are there to all help families who maybe have obstacles to getting their immunizations, um, help through that process. Um, and you know to avoid to number one help them be prevented from illness and number two avoid um, for, from exclusion from school because it is a state law that those the, those vaccines are um, completed and up to date so right. we want to do everything we can to avoid that situation and keep people healthy right and be, again because of the close proximity of classrooms and, and kiddos being in in areas um, you want them vaccinated for the preventative piece mm -hmm. but but also if someone else has an illness or brings them in an illness you know that's that's the piece you you want to protect against because right. those little germs like to jump from here, here yes. to there that's that's very true and we have some some students who medically aren't able to get mm -hmm. vaccines so um, you know it really is a kind of a community effort to keep ourselves and everyone else healthy right wonderful well we hope this has been a good reminder for you to, um, to get vaccinations for your children, make sure they're up to date, um, get the flu shot and all of those uh, uh, recommended vaccinations to make sure that your child is happy and healthy for another great school year. Thanks for joining us today on Positive Parenting.